Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanalay the Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333, and in this first match today, we're going to have a match between Salvix and Google Frog on Red Comet. So, Salvix, a bit of a newer player, they've been playing for a few months now, so I'm curious to see how they're going to be handling this. While Google Frog, on the other hand, they are, well, one of the main developers of the game and have been playing this game for a long time. So, this is definitely in Google Frog's favor as far as experience goes, but, of course, Every match has its own match, so we'll see how the players play it out. Google Frog going for Shieldbot Factory. Salbix going for the Rover Factory, also known as the Light Vehicle Factory. Starting out with a well, pretty basic standard build. Mason into a few Scorchers. Actually, it looks like it looks like the Scorchers are possibly going to be used as a Calm Rush. Three right off the bat. That's not uncommon for Calm Rush builds. On the other hand, Google Frog going in for what looks like a fairly standard opening. A couple Bandits, a couple Convicts, more Bandits. Google Frog's definitely playing this for the long game. They want to have that, they want to have that expansion, they want to have a fairly safe economy. They are setting up fairly quickly at the front base, actually both players are, and this starting location, it's got the shortest rush distance, especially when your opponent has taken it as well, but it also means that you have a much easier time defending the southwest as well as the center. But you have to be able to hold it for at least the early game. If you can hold the center, you're fine. You can go from there, hold the defensive line across here, across here, and then the southwest just becomes, or northeast in the case of the eastern player, becomes quite easy to take and hold. In contrast, if you start in the southwest where it's easier to hold the southwest than in the center, but it's harder to then take the center. And at this point, it really does look like Salvix is going for a pretty aggressive opening. But primarily for scouting purposes, not even hyper aggressive, just going in to try to figure out where their opponents are, and that's why they have the three Scorchers. I've not seen this kind of play in a long time. Generally speaking, I would see people use a dart or maybe just one Scorcher and then try to scan around the entire section until they found their opponent's main base. But no, we are seeing start out today with Scorchers used for scouting, which is possibly a bit of a shame because this is almost enough Scorcher to stop Google Frog's commander. We're not for the commander having the lightning gun, which Google Frog, thankfully for them, upgraded into. Now, on the other hand, Salbix looks to be primarily focused on expansion. They've... Despite my earlier statements, they're clearly not focused on early rushes. They're clearly not focused on getting super early wins. They're clearly far more focused on making sure that they have a strong position economically. It's just Google Frog has kind of beaten to the punch. At this point, Google Frog already having a 3 metal per second advantage, and that is growing fairly rapidly with Google Frog expanding to the north and actually not to the south. They're expanding the center with their commander. They have a northern convict and another convict in their main base building up the power plants, but otherwise not much. On the other hand, Salvix... Having only one Mason and their commander, that's it. That's all that's doing any kind of expansion or construction. So Salbix, I don't see them having an easy time maintaining an economic parity. Not even lead. They currently have parity, but it does feel like they're falling behind. Especially given the bandits coming in here. Google Frog should be able to quite easily just rush down the main base. There's one... Okay, two, two fencers coming in here. That's something. But even then, the angle at which Google Frog is approaching this, expecting Salvix to have built over to the northwest, means that Google Frog will be able to get down into the main base, take out at least one metal extractor, possibly both. Maybe get rid of the factory as well. That is doubtful, but the fact is, Salvix is completely unaware of this. Oh no, they're not unaware. They're fully aware. They actually have all the ideas in the world. They know exactly what's happening, and they're sending the fencers back, but it's too little too late as far as the metal extractors are concerned. I mean, the fences will do their best, but Google Frog is going to be, as you can see, microing the bandits around everything, trying to stay behind the walls of the solar collectors. Taking off what they can, although at this point, they're actually not able to get as much as I thought they would. Not as much value. Nice flank, however, on the eastern side of Salvix's base. But as for the main, the main force of bandits, this might get the mason, and that... It does! It does get the mason. That is a massive blow, especially considering Salvix only had the one. The Salvix, they have no other constructors besides their commander. This entire southwest section will not be expanded into. That is that is easily 5 metal per second that Salvix would love to have. They're already 7 behind. It's going to grow rapidly as Google Frog continues to expand into the center. Pretty much secure the southeast as well as soon as they decide to go get it. As soon as they deign to construct any metal extractors there. Because at this point, Google Frog, they're focused more on the power. They're focused more on the caretakers. They are starting to excess metal. But even then, they're still way ahead of Salvix. That being said, a few units were lost. There's some reclaim available, which unfortunately nothing is here to reclaim it. But if it were, 100-ish metal for reclaim. And a mason is on the way. Actually, 200 metal in total when you consider the entire western side. 
So th this Mason sets up, and another Mason comes in, and actually even more Mason. Salvix is definitely getting back on the ball when it comes to construction. They should have an, they should have a decent time getting back in this, or at least restabilizing. But even then, their units are completely out of position. Their commander is heavily threatened. The South Expansion is also having a difficult time maintaining its integrity, and really, nothing is holding any of these rogues back. The slash the fencers would be in a good position to stop them as well, but nothing's happening. Or at least No, that wouldn't actually wouldn't be. The range is let's see three sorry. The range is five thirty for the rogues and six hundred for the fencers. No, the fencers would have no problem. They'd be able to stop this with a nice flank, but Salvix is not gone for that. I'm actually kind of curious, what is Salvix focused on? Okay, now they got the fence. I'm thinking, what has Salvix been focused on? But it's clear that they've been really focused heavily on their commander, keeping their commander intact. Not so focused on keeping their units in a good position to keep their overall expansions intact. Which is a bit of a shame, but I can see that happening. That's It's easy to get distracted. There are a lot of things going on in this game. So I can understand. That being said, though, fencers do outrange lotuses. By quite a lot, actually. <laughs> By about 33%. They're... There wasn't really a reason to lose that fencer down there. Still, though, it's you know, some harassment going on here for Salvix. Unfortunately, losing their Scorcher to the Metal Extractor Explosion. As I mentioned last week, try to keep your forces away from buildings that explode. If you can. It's actually really important. It's hard with Scorchers because they deal more damage the closer they are. But if you get them away from the Death Explosion, you can keep them raiding longer. Or at least force your opponent to invest more forces into blocking you. But that is not what happened, alas. However, it looks like Salvix has taken advantage of the outranging of the Lotus at this point. So at the very least, the fencers are managing to get some value now that there's about nine of them. And actually, a decent amount of value putting Google Frog into a defensive position, but nowhere near the back foot. Google Frog still has most of the map. They still have a commanding presence on the north in particular. And there's enough of an army here that really, the fences are a mild inconvenience. And Google Frog realizing this, and I mean, they totally know this. They're just gonna, they're gonna rush in. There's no reason not to just march in with the thugs and the rogues. Yeah, they're gonna take some damage, but the thugs just shield away. Like this shield, this is a really smart move overall. The shield's up front, stopping defensive missiles from doing anything. And the shield link, meaning that none of the thugs are really losing all that much. And the fact that the shields are so strong as well, meaning that really, the defensers just don't stand a chance. And this is the point where a lot more Scorches would be nice, or we're even getting a few Rippers, the new name for the leveler. Getting those set up, that would work beautifully. But yeah, these thugs from Google Frog are the absolute perfect counter to this, to the Fencer push. And that is likely to break Salvix. Certainly broke their center line, most of their forces are dead, and while Google Frog's commander is under some threat, it's really not much. Nor can the Ravager do all that much, all things considered. Just when you consider how much they have to get through, how much firepower they have to fight through in order to be able to get through here, and the defensers down as well, Google Frog is basically set up to win this. They have twice the economy, they have full production, they have pretty much the entire unit counters, and Salvix has no army. I can understand why Salvix went for the fencers, but at the same time, shields pretty much stuff that. I personally am not even sure what value fencers often get against shields compared to rippers, even Raptors have more of an advantage, but that's even that's hard to show when there's only one or two. And Scorchers, of course, can get under the shields and deal a fair amount of damage. So those are all options, but overall, not fencers. Not against shields. So Google Frog demonstrating that pretty strongly. And now just going in for the kill. I'm actually a little surprised they're taking as long as they are to go in for the kill. They probably are a little cautious because they're not sure what Salvix has. Because Salvix has had this entire time to build up and to expand. Fortunately, not enough to deal with that, and Google Frog takes the match. So overall, that was a pretty good demonstration of why it's important to understand the matchup. Because that matchup, not a matchup where you want to use fencers. At least not if they're going to use thugs. It, it's very easy to counter, more importantly, is what I'm saying. But that's fine. At this point, we have another match after this. This is going to be a match between Dimefreund and Anir on Vitra. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple of moments.